So this is the old Lee Time outboard motor battery, and you can put them into series to run any outboard motor up to 48 volts. But now they have a new one that can go up to 60 volts. And on the old one, the surge capacity was incredible. You can check out my recent video where we tested it with 500 amps. But on the new one, they actually have Bluetooth and a bunch of other random features. So we're gonna open this up, see what they changed, and then we'll do a load test with hundreds of amps. And that will be the fun part. So first we need to open this thing up. Now lead time did not tell me what they changed really, they just told me about the new features, but on the newer one they have different cells. And I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing, I don't think I've seen these before. Next they have a piece of foam with holes in it for the overpressure relief valves. Typically it looks like this. And I've complained about this foam design before, as you'll notice it's actually blocking one of the overpressure relief valves. On the new one it has holes and they should have done this a long time ago. QR code looks good. Also, I capacity tested this battery before I opened it. So I'll post the results of that capacity test right now. Next difference is the bus bar configuration for the main terminals. So we have the main positive right here and the main negative. But you'll notice that it's actually protruding out a little bit. And these would never get hit under normal circumstances because you have this massive piece of foam. But on these ones, they're actually sticking up and they're more out of the way. I don't think it'll make that much of a difference, but this is a better design. Next, on the older model, they had this wire and it was unprotected. On this one, it's actually sheathed. And because this one has Bluetooth, you're gonna have a small blue flashing light. This one does not. Next, on the old one, you could only put four of these batteries into series. On the new one, you can put five of them into series, which means you can charge to 72.5. So that means the FETs inside are probably rated to 80 or 90 volts. Now the nominal voltage for five of them is 64 volts. So that's what the motor will typically see, but make sure that it fulfills the voltage requirements of your motors before you hook them up. Now, in my opinion, I do not like having this many 12 volt batteries in series, especially for running a motor. If one of the batteries is having an issue and the overcurrent protection trips, the whole string will shut down. And that's why on the new one, the BMS will actually turn itself on every 30 seconds after it shuts down. So technically it now works, but you have five BMSs in series. There's just more room for problems to occur. They should have a higher voltage battery with one BMS. And with all the money that they're gonna save in manufacturing costs, they could have that one with the even higher current rating. Because having five BMSs that can handle 500 amps costs a lot more than a single one that can handle even more current. So yeah, I do not like this configuration in my opinion. Also having that many batteries in series, you're going to get an imbalance over time. So every six months or so, you're going to have to take the whole system apart and charge each battery individually. It would be more logical to have a single battery and a single charger and be done with it. Also, who has a charger that can go up to 70 something volts? So they better be selling that. If not, that feature is pretty useless in my opinion, because I really don't think people are gonna individually charge five batteries in series. That just sounds like a pain in the butt. Anyways, moving on. This has a temperature sensor. Let's see if it actually works. So first we're charging with 10 amps and here's some ice water. Oh, it just turned off already. I don't think I got that on camera. Let's heat it up. Okay, it's charging. Put it in the ice water. And it works, nice. So it passed the capacity test, low temp testing. Now we can do surge testing. I wish there was an easier way, but man, this thing works so good. Instead of the shunt, we're gonna watch the voltage with this. It will be easier to see. First test is 300 amps for 30 seconds. One, 22, 23, 45, 46, 47, 57, 58, 59, 60. So it's rated for 30 seconds, but it disconnects at around a minute. Oh, and it turned itself back on. Now let's turn it off. Now let's crank it over 300 amps and see if it will disconnect faster. And here we go. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh, it tripped, look at that. And let's watch it turn itself back on. And it's back on. Six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Maybe it's getting too hot now. Let's turn it off. Now for anybody wondering, I'm using the monitor on my camera and there's a second counter. So I'm just reading it off of the screen. In case you thought I was just counting, that's not what I'm doing. And this battery is hot, but nothing smells bad. So that's a good sign. Now let's go for 500 amps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And now it's back on, so let's flip the switch. Yeah, that was like one second. Well, at least the overcurrent protection's working. That's a good sign. Now, during the surge testing, I think we hit two different safety features. First off, we hit overcurrent because there's a shunt on board and it has a calculation to figure out when to trip that safety feature. And then second, because we were doing back-to-back -back testing, this thing was getting super hot. And lead time told me that part of the calculation is also the temperature for prolonged duration surge testing. And if you do them back-to-back, -back, you're gonna get less and less time. Now, most people with motors will turn it on and then it will just run and the continuous output is only 100 amps and it can run those motors just fine with that current. Now personally, my favorite feature in this testing was the fact that it can turn itself on so quickly. We waited like 10 seconds and then it turned itself on and we could do the test over again, which is why we got it to overheat. If you're running an electric motor, you don't want this thing shutting down and needing a battery charger to turn it back on again. So that's very useful for this application. Now the application that I would use this for, for solar, is if you have a small battery, but you want to run a big motor. Two of these could push a thousand amps for one second or 600 amps for 30 seconds to a minute, which is incredible. And look how small this thing is. And if you're running the motor intermittently and you don't need that much capacity, this could save you a lot of money. But it's not for everyone. If you're trying to build a big solar power system, this is not for you. But if you have a mobile application unit and you have to run a large motor, this is fantastic. Especially for the price, it's like $350 or something. And you can push that much current, that is a very good deal. And you have all the other safety features. Now what this battery is missing is internal heaters. So if you're in a low temp environment, this is probably not for you. And that's pretty much it for this review. A pretty good performing battery. I think I think this is my favorite lead time battery because the first one started my car lift, which is absolutely insane. If you had two or three of these, you could start up pretty much anything and that would be a really small footprint. So please let me know what you think in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.